Question is from Brandon LPZ26. What should kids' nutrition look like? Should I worry about giving my children more protein, healthy fats, and vegetables instead of focusing on carbs, as the food pyramid suggests? So it's not that, it's not so black and white. And what I mean by that, the best uh, studies that we have on what's healthy nutrition um, are these really big cultural studies because most a lot of nutrition studies are done uh, by survey. Uh, very few really controlled studies, so it's kind of difficult to tell, you know, what's doing what or whatever. But there are some general things that we've kind of teased out. One of them is overeating is probably not a good idea, regardless mm -hmm. of what you're eating. Um, from a trainer standpoint, I think creating good behaviors around food is really important. And a lot of what your kids learn, behaviorize around food, are from observing you or from the way you and your your spouse or you and their other parent or other you know uh, parental figure uh, eat foods. As far as carbohydrates, proteins, and fats are concerned, you can go look. You can go to some very healthy cultures. You go, you can watch some Japanese cultures that are very, very healthy, and they're, they're relatively carb dominant. There's a lot of rice and a lot of starchy vegetables and a lot of vegetables and fish and not a whole lot of meat. And you can go to other cultures that are more paleo with the way that they – feed their children that are very healthy. Now, one thing that all these cultures have in, combi that have in common is they don't overeat and they also don't eat a lot of heavily processed foods. I, and I think that's the real, uh, I guess this one's different for me, right? Because my kid's not here at, at this point, although we were about to start introducing food. Um, and I think the way I would look at it um, is exactly that. The, the biggest concern that I have with his, his diet in the future is other people giving him things that are are less ideal, like you know, candy and sweets and ice cream and, and stuff that is for sure less beneficial than whole foods, right? So that and that to me is what I'm more concerned about. And so and I think I would like pay attention to the way he's eating. If I I know I think the boys both do this. It's something that I I would for sure do is I I would start their their plates with the like the vegetables and the and the greens and get those things get them eating those things first. And then I would work my way to the protein, and then eventually I'd work my way to the carbohydrates. So I'd kind of serve dinner. I plan to serve dinner like that. Now, I have no idea how that's going to go down. Like maybe it's mm -hmm. going to be a nightmare for me, and uh, it's not going to work. And at the end of the day, uh, as I'm going to be paying attention, is, is he getting – uh, did he go a day, two days with no protein? Okay, well then tomorrow I make sure that that's definitely a priority in the way we eat. Or did I notice that he had processed food in his diet? I'm going to make sure that the next day he has none of that shit in there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm going to be paying attention like that. I'm I'm not going to be counting his macros no. and in making sure that he's every meal has got a a, a twenty percent ratio of protein, a thirty percent. You know, what I'm saying I'm not doing it's that. It's tough because I mean there is that like, am I going to give my kid a complex like way too early? You know about uh, you know, all these different parameters they have to fit in. And, uh, you know, for me, it's it's different. It's different. And everybody's family is different. Everybody's kids are different. Uh, but there are some of those things, like you mentioned, with like trying to avoid, you know, heavily processed foods. Like, I, I just think in terms of that being like one goal, that's a big goal. That, right. Because you, you have you boxed don't buy them. juice, you have bought, like, yeah. So, and that's the thing too, is like, you know, they are going to go out. They are going to be at a friend's house. They are going to like, you know, it depends on if you want to be that rigid about like what uh, that looks like in your family. But for me, I like to make like I like to educate, and we we've talked about this about like why it's good to rotate nutrients and like get introduce you know different types of these foods into their diet and like what kind of health you know that promotes and like it boosts your immune system. This one gives you energy. Like this helps your muscles grow. Like you know, very simple things. Uh, you know, where it's like more like I'm I like I want them to want to get this because they're they're starting to move more to work out more and they want to benefit their body because you know those foods provide that yeah i think you know overall just it's okay to relax a little bit um right. you know because you know what happens when you have fitness fanatics who have kids uh sometimes it goes too far it's too rigid yeah and then you create some problems they'll 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 rebound and go in the opposite direction and have a bad experience with food because i look i have cousins like this i have cousins who's my, my uncle was a Super into nutrition. He's a Chinese herbalist, and his kids ate nothing that was not healthy. They didn't buy anything that wasn't healthy, but it was so rigid and strict. The second they came out of the house, they all, you know, they went crazy with their with their food and their nutrition. And yeah. you you, you got to be okay, be a little loose. Remember, these kids live in the real world. 
Um, and at the end of the day, really what the most important thing is, is the environment of the house. They're going to watch you. They're going to see how you yeah, eat. Yeah, 100%. That, to me, that's, that's the, the biggest factor. The biggest thing that I've had to coach to this point is with parents. And it's like, if, you, if you're the type of parent that, you know, makes your breakfast, makes your dinner, makes your lunch at home, and you use, you know, mostly whole foods to get that done, and you, the kids see you eat that, you eat that with you. You're doing better than 90% of the Right, uh, and that's such there. a – because they're, 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 it's inevitable, right? And I, I, I have to make peace with this already because I know this is going to be one of my challenges. Yeah. So I'm aware that they're going to make their way over, you know, to the uncle's house or my or my grandmother, the gra- their grandmother's house one time, and they're gonna sneak them a popsicle or give them an Oreo, and there's or you may find that you know you're like with my kids, like they, if, if my daughter it's like I don't want to eat anything that you, you know, no eggs or whatever, like okay, we'll have a little bit of cereal. I'll pick the right cereal, have some whole milk with it. It's not that big of a deal if you do that, you know, here and there, and it's it's not a big deal, and it, you just kind of could be okay. A little bit with that because you're going too far in the other direction. Yeah. Uh, because here's kids will fucking, I swear to God, it, it, th- this is the biggest battle that parents have with kids by far. You ask any parent, it's, it's mealtime. That's the hardest, oh, yeah. hardest struggle. It's it's the biggest stressor you're going to find like as the kids you know grow up. And that's why it is like you have to be kind of like strategic about how you're going to handle it like cuz it happens every single night. It's either like a, a serious battle or it's like, you know, like like I'm just going to kind of let this one go. Now, to that point though, Justin, you I think you shared with me uh this was before I had Max and I was just kind of uh, asking you dad questions like you know, where I, I think the question I asked you one night when we were, I think we were in Sacramento or something, and I said, uh, you know, is there something that you did really good with your firstborn that mm. you didn't do with your second? Mm-hmm. And can you tell the difference in their behaviors? And you shared with me that the, the way you were eating wise and, the, and you noticed patterns mm-hmm. now that they're older. What was that? So the first, I mean, we were very, uh, I think that, that we put a lot of effort and attention into, um, you know, like the sourcing and the quality of the food that we would like freeze ahead of time and have it all like pre prepped. So we would be able to like blend these things and introduce, you know, certain things one at a time. And, uh, we, we did a lot better job of the diversity of the nutrients we expose our first kid to, to where he like it, I don't know, like, you know, this is like, again, one of those things like anecdotal wise, like, I don't know if that was be, like why he's more of an adventurous eater and will try things, you know, or if it's just a personality thing where my youngest, like, so we didn't, uh, unfortunately, you know, like the, there was just less, way busier with less attention. You're busy. You got all these things. All of a sudden, you know, you're accounting for like a lot more in your house and uh, you know, it, it did happen. It just didn't happen as frequently, and we weren't as intentional from the very beginning. And that's why I think that there might have been, a, you know, a missed opportunity on some level uh, to where it's been much more of a battle with my youngest uh, in terms of like getting him to to span out of like the two or three things he'll even eat. Mm. So, uh, but it, he's coming around, and I think that. Uh, again, like it, it, it's stressful as a parent because you Dude, feel like you're failing or like, you know, especially if you're in the health. It's business. one of the number one things. Yeah. You, you talk to any parent, what's your number one stress with your child, especially before they're teenagers. Once they're teenagers, they start to make choices and you're like, whatever. But uh, it's it's feeding time. It's one of the most difficult, absolute difficult things. And it's like, do you want to have a war well, I also every think, time? Because that's not healthy. I, 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 mean? I also think that's why a lot of them fold, though. I think that's why a lot of them fold and say, fuck it, we're going to McDonald's. Right, you know, or fuck sometimes it, go, that's way, throw, way throw, throw the frozen burrito in there here. And yeah. you know what? Here's the thing. Sometimes that's okay. Sometimes it's okay because again, at the end of the day, this kid is going to live in the real world. Do you think they're not going to fucking drive by a McDonald's right. when they're older? You know, it'll end up happening. It's like again, it's like those kids that are so so strict. The second they get they out, rebel. They rebel. It's yeah. like this. It's like the hyper Christian family whose kid grows up and is like, "I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be a Satanist yeah. or whatever." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Holy shit! What happened? That happens, dude. Totally. Yeah. No, I think that's just it. You just can't be extreme about it. But and again, in my non-experience of raising a child, but all the experience I had with clients who had children and talking, having this discussion a lot, the ones that had the most success were the ones that just led from the front. That they they lived a healthy life. Totally. Mom and dad looked fit. They ate well. Everybody they had eats energy. Together. Yeah, they ate together. Like 
those were the ones that 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 never seemed to have this the same type of struggle. Not to say that they don't all have struggle, and they and and that time's not stressful like Justin and Sal are both saying. But those those families that I I was coaching, those ones had the easier time. It was the family that you know. Mom and dad both worked. They mm -hmm. they rarely ever sat at the dinner table together. You know, maybe they they pick they got to eat at work because they worked at a place like Google where they could eat there. Then they came home, and then when they came home, whatever it was fast and easy. They made the kids, or they could throw from a box. Like, you know, you you do that, and then you and then you see your kids start to put on weight, and then you get all nervous, like, oh shit, well, he's getting this is getting out of control. Yeah, and I'm putting my kid, on, yeah. I'm putting my kid on a diet, and they're gonna eat differently than the rest of the family. Yeah, that that's not gonna it's cost not gonna something. work. Yeah, back to the the processed food point though. Like I I have noticed like and why th this is so something that you you definitely want to kind of consider is that like i've noticed them they'll, they'll eat a lot more calories if that's like included it's hyper palatable yeah so just like we i mean we talk about this a lot but you visibly see it like with your kids if they're eating like more of the boxed stuff and like the the, the chips and the crackers and all this they're 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 not as good at self regulating so like if not you kind of leave them to you know, to themselves, they know how much they should like feed themselves. You're giving them kind of more whole foods. Like it, it's this natural like mechanism. It, it, they stop when they should stop. So it, it is, it's, it's one of those things like calories is a thing that, you know, you want to let them sort of, you know, regulate.